Hello, it's Alex. Now, this was going to be a video about me working on my Rover P6, but I had a sudden brainwave that told me I think the MOT's run out on the Nissan Micra. Well, I looked, and yes, it ran out yesterday, and guess what? The Micra's parked on the road. So I need to go and do what I need to do and get it on the driveway quick because I haven't got time to take it for an MOT this week. So it'll have to sit on the drive for a bit. Now I'm not going to lie to you, I have not touched this car for flipping ages because it's got a very annoying fault. So what is the Nissan Micra's annoying little fault? Well. I'll show you, or you can listen. Put the ignition on. <laughs> then this air micro doesn't start. What I've been, what I've been having to do is undo this. Take that off, put that down there, <laughs> see it was that shocking that you fell into the engine. So you have to have some kind of skill of having your foot on the accelerator, your key hand and this hand squirting. tedious that is when you want to pop to the shop yes so on this car it has not got a manual choke it's got an automatic choke so whatever the automatic choke does which I not really know I'm not that familiar with them I've got my Haynes manual down there whatever the automatic choke does it's not doing to begin with I think after I've sprayed it and revved it I'm pretty sure the auto choke kicks in but the initial startup is not doing bugger all. <laughs> it doesn't help that I parked inside of a tree. Ooh. So here we are. Let's get the filter out of the way. Put that with the lid on the roof because the micro doesn't care. air cleaner casing off to have a good look at the carburetor to see what type I've got and where the automatic choke is. Ten mil. Everything's ten mil. Ten or thirteen. Didn't bring a little um out with me. Now inside the air cleaner there's a little um, temperature controlled valve I suppose you call it. When it's cold it closes. Does it close or open? I think it opens when it's cold and closes when it's hot. It's to do with airflow. That's irrelevant. I wondered if that would be something to do with it but it's not. Not from what I can see, anyway. Pipe there as well. Oh. 
falls off. Don't forget to put it back on though when you put this back on. I won't put that on the roof, it's a bit savage. So in the Haynes manual, it's got here automatic choke, metal housing. All right, I've seen that. And there's somewhere here. It tells me I've seen it about adjusting it. The bloody thing. Fast idle choke. Right. What have we got here? Choke, automatic choke. With the engine cold, move the air cleaner and the choke housing cover. Yes, we can do that. Turn the throttle lever until the primary throttle valve is fully open. Figure 311. Uh, that's 310. That's 311. So that's the choke valve. Choke valve. Right. Oh. This is looking rather complicated. I mean, the carburetor hasn't been touched for so long. Um, even the spiders died in there. Look. Yeah. I'll have to clean that away. It's all going to get into the carburetor otherwise. This looks like it's the choke housings held in with little phillips screws and there is a little wire here which i presume pulls off oh i hate touching old stuff like this because you think is it going to break yeah i won't pull it all right i'll just see if i can unscrew it it's a little bit awkward in here I'm trying to get these screws undone <laughs> need a really stubby screwdriver to get in there it's coming though well you missed that because i didn't have the camera on but i just took the last screw out of this pulled it and something went twang okay so inside it's a big clock spring must be what twanged and then there's a throttle something here. Oh my god. I just moved that whole thing. <laughs> oh god, there's a gasket there. I better put that safe. I still didn't get rid of these cobwebs, did I? Oh, idiot. Well, yeah. Don't know what I'm looking at there. Well, I know what I'm looking at here. It's just this bit. I just... <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go look at the manual again. I've got to do this in stages because of my little brain. So it says, close this fella. So that's, that's that one fully closed. This little lever here, yeah. Make sure it's fully closed. Then the throttle, which is down here, you've got to turn that all the way until it's open which it is and then it says you've got to check that there's a 2.1 millimeter gap there that looks roughly 2.1 gosh I've had to dig through all my feeler gauges and I'm rubbish with math, but I managed to get these together and this is roughly two millimetres. So let's check. Yep, they fit and there's a tiny bit of room, which is right because it's 2.1. So that's good. The gap's correct. Whew. Pain. Got to put 
put all them back now. So what's next? Da -da 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 -da. We got the clearance, fantastic. Primary and second valve plate interlock. Ugh. What even is all this? Primary and second interlock. The figure 312. Oh god. Must have got the brake diaphragm thing there. Connecting lever, lock lever. Oh god. Ugh. Leave it with me a minute. Now this is absolutely bloody rubbish. I don't know if I'm missing something. But it tells me to, you know, close the, the choke flap and open the accelerator and check the gap. And then it goes on something else, which is irrelevant. Nothing to do with the choke. And then it goes on to talk about dash pots. It hasn't shown me how to put the lid back on and where that little spring thing's meant to go. Well, that's rubbish. <laughs> Make sure you look out for part two. Thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, and subscribe. <laughs>